The tone is decidedly bearish, right? We've had an awful lot of positive news. NYC ICE announcing an exchange, uh, Fidelity getting into custody, some other custody solutions coming out. Uh, but the, the, the tone has just been bearish and people have been selling. What you're seeing now, from my view, is a bit of panic selling. Investors that were in it maybe caught the hype in November, December, or projects that raised funds in Ethereum or Bitcoin are now panic selling out. So when I look at this, to me, it's one of the better entry points that we've had in a long time, particularly when you view it against where support is for Bitcoin, which is somewhere around 58, 5,900, as well as the short interest, which is almost at records. All right. So, Sherry, you're Hi. a BC crypto fund. You advise blockchain startups. You're, you're in this as well. You've, I would imagine, have a bullish uh, view. When you put forth the case, and we've heard this from so many crypto evangelists, that this is like the Internet, and we're only, what, 10 years into development of blockchain or so, and it took 30 years to develop the Internet. Why should I be invested in Bitcoin now then? I mean, if everybody's going to come forth and say, Amazon, it took nine years from, from uh, you know, the Internet bubble to recover to its highs, why should I be in this now? There's an opportunity cost associated with putting my capital into a cryptocurrency now if the development of the blockchain, the underlying technology, is not going to be for another decade or so. Well, it's not to say that there won't be gains between now and that point. There'll be ebbs and flows. When I think back to 2013, when I first got into Bitcoin and bought in 2013, 2014, and then saw a gut-wrenching 85 percent decline, that was, who knew? And at this point, I look back and I'm just sorry I didn't buy more. So, I, you know, in terms of where do you where do you buy and where do you pull the trigger? I, you know, it, it's it's just not having any regard for the long term potential of the fact that blockchain will be as transformative of the Internet and create as the Internet and create just uh, the Internet 3.0. Uh, creating a more secure internet and so many new creative kinds of things that will come that we never imagined having with the internet when we first were exposed to that when we all had email. Um, all right. Uh, B Brian <laughs> Kelly, you mentioned Ethereum and the sell-off that we're seeing there, and you mentioned how a lot of the ICOs built on the Ethereum platform, a lot of people are selling out of ICOs, and so therefore Ethereum is seeing some uh, softness here. Is that a buying opportunity in your view? I mean, if you're a long-term believer, is that where you want to be? Yeah, I, I listen, I, th I, I do think so. In terms of, you know, when I look at Ethereum, to me, that's like an operating system. Where, you know, whether you're going with Windows or Apple's OS, that's what Ethereum is to this ecosystem. And to the extent that you believe in the long-term view, you want to make a bet on a couple of the operating systems. I mean, to answer your previous question about why is there an opportunity cost today, I mean, I see two major reasons. I mean, number one, much better to buy it today than at 20,000. Let's just talk about Bitcoin. Ethereum, much better to buy it today at 250 than at 1400. But secondarily, this is software, and software can adapt much faster than hardware. The internet, you had to build out all these rails that were hardware based. Now you have software. That time frame can compress. There's this fun little thing called Bitcoin time. Things happen much faster than you expect, and I think that's what we'll experience in the evolution of this ecosystem.